quick. Everything's on. Okay, let's begin with the flag slip. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody, to the uh, June 3rd Marion County Commission meeting. Uh, as always, we begin with public comments, at the public forum, and we have someone that would like to speak. Greg, would you like to come up to the seat? And, okay. Uh, we do ask to limit the comments to three minutes, but uh, not a problem. We appreciate you being here today. So I appreciate you guys having me here, and I appreciate what you guys do. Um, what I'm here for, obviously, is over the past three weeks, I've sent you a variety of information based on state statutes and court rulings and attorney general's opinions and the county road laws of Kansas information, as well as past county commission meeting minutes and things like that. And all we're looking at, basically, from, from I guess what I see in talking with the residents out there is that the county should probably be responsible for taking care of our roads out there based upon that information. The only reason I think I'm here today is I kind of want to get a feel or an idea of what you guys' thoughts are on, on that situation. Okay, I think I've explained our position in the, in the paper, so I don't need to re-go over it. It's just, I want to know what you guys are thinking. So that's kind of, that's kind of where I'll leave it right now. So I've got plenty of time after three minutes left. Okay. Well, just to, to quick responses, we sent you a quick response that we've received the information. Our legal counsel is reviewing it. And it's, I mean, it's just not going to be a knee-jerk reaction, but we want to make sure you did a very thorough job in presenting your case. So we want to be able to respond responsibly to that. Correct. Of course, there's a long, as everyone knows, there's a long tangled history out at the, out at the county lake. Uh, some of the roads obviously are maintained by the county. Some of the roads are not. Right. That's where I'm going to leave it. If any other commissioners would like to make comments, response. But I'm, I'm just curious, Gary, what, what type of a road are you looking for? 24 foot wide ditches, shoulders? Well, I think all they're really all they're really asking for is just just simple maintenance on the roads they do have. You know, they talk about you know putting rock to fill in the holes and the washouts and things like that, which which is fine and in, in, in a dry season that works. But when you get into a rainy season and things like that, we have washouts and there's potholes and things get kind of rough. And then to expect the people out there to do it themselves, I mean, there's been issues where one patron may bring in their own rock and it rains and that rock ends up in the neighbor's driveway down the way. That neighbor gets mad and then they have an altercation and then the sheriff's called and that becomes a problem. So the I guess the ultimate thing that I look at and yeah, it might be expensive at the beginning, but it would be a cost saver down the long run is to have something like the millings that were put in in 2002, where it's, you know, basically it's asphalt that is soft that can be heated up in the summertime and, and rolled and then would stay in place. And then it's not going to wash away. I mean, black topping, but yeah, that gets pretty expensive or chip and seal. But something like that that would hold, okay, that you wouldn't have to do it over and over and over again. You know, in the short run, if you guys just came and put rock on it, obviously when you get a three-inch rain, it comes down hard. It's on um, some of those roads, Hill Road, Rock Road, Back, court, or back Bay Court, some of those. The, the water, because the problem that I see is, is drainage. But if you have something that's solid there, then you're not going to have the washouts and the water will just run down the road and go on into the lake anyway. But with the washouts and things, then you're going to have to go in and replace rock multiple times, you know, over and over again. And, and that's not cost efficient, I don't think. Um, 
I wish back in the day that zoning and planning would have followed through with the drainage uh, issues as far as keeping the uh, easements in check. But from what I gather is there's been some variant uh, licenses or I guess is that what you call it, a variant license or a permit, the variant permit that's been given to people out there to where they're practically building on, on top of the easements. It's like the Wild West. And, that's, and, what that, they and that's a problem, you know, and that becomes a problem. And then some people, I, I, can, uh, I can foresee because it happens everywhere, people take it upon themselves just to build and then see if anybody's going to stop them from doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and then come out and enforce something. Well, if there's no enforcement of something, then, then that becomes a problem too. And I guess one example I can give, and I don't want to get into that story, but I know like in zoning and planning, one of the, I guess, ordinances or res whatever they have was that there would be no uh, trailer houses put upon the property out there around the lake. Well, just here recently, we have a trailer house that was brought in. One was torn down or removed, which... It was kind of grandfathered in, but once it left, then a new one should shouldn't have been able to come back, come into play. But but it was put in play, and well now it's there. There's not a whole lot can be done, and then now they got a garage that they got a variant for that they've built in the back. To me, it's too close to the road where they've put it. But again, if zoning and planning is not going to do anything about it, then that becomes a problem. So there is a, a, a rule in planning and zoning that allows for a trailer house to be removed and one put back then in a certain amount of time. I have not seen it in the county, but there's a lot of places that allows that if one's taken out, one can be put back in, if it meets the code, usually. But that's, that's the one's rules that I know of another town that has. I don't know what, I haven't read it in the county's rules that they can do that, but... So. If they can, well, they can, but I haven't seen that. I, think. Well, I guess I was just yeah. throwing that out as an yeah. example. Too. Coming back to the roads. Coming back to the roads. Yeah. So. And I would just, I would just, you know, need to find a way to where, you know, to, to us, from what I've gathered, that the county should be responsible for maintaining the roads. And I know <coughs> the people out there would be happy with just simple, basic maintenance, just so that they can get in and out without having to deal with the washouts and, right. and having issues. You know, obviously those roads are traveled on. Uh, the better the roads, you know, that, you know, to where you, if you can't, if you can avoid the washouts and the, in the uh, uh, situation like that, that would be great, okay? Like I said, in the long run, I think that would be best. Uh, but if you want to keep just putting rock in and rock in and rock in, that's, you know, I guess fine too. I know I've talked to Isaac. If if they would be willing to help out, I mean they've got a tractor out there and they've got a truck and 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 put rock down if that's the case. This is their busy season though. And I know I talked to Isaac about a skid steer. You know that he thought Roden Bridge had something that could come out occasionally and do work too, but. I, I think we're getting a little bit past public comments. If we want to go okay. further into it, we should set up an agenda time. Okay. And then we could spend more time and talk about it more thoroughly. But Dave, you had a comment. Would the residents be uh, look at a special tax to build a fund? For they the would building? be ag they would be against the tax for the simple fact that they feel they pay enough taxes out there. Well, we all do. So I mean, no matter where you live in Marion but County, there, but there's a lot of taxes out there. We have the so, there's in the city of Marion too. So, so I I know that would probably not be. A, be the case. But. Yeah, I thought I'd move the town and save taxes, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, Greg, we appreciate you bringing in your concerns. We have the written documents. Again, we're going to uh, wait for our legal counsel to provide us with some more information, and then I think it'd be appropriate to do an agenda item to come in and so will you and guys do. invite me in then, or do I have to keep checking over <laughs> and over and over again? Why don't we invite you when we get... Because I guess my question is... Yeah. What kind of timeline are we looking at here? Well, so. it doesn't happen fast. But well, Isaac like, won't have time till this winter. Well, I understand. But what kind of timeline can we resolve this issue with? I know Mr. Well, we Vance has got to do 
he's got to go through the process, yes. We can have a discussion, I would hope, within three or four weeks. But as far as a, a settlement, it's going to take, I think it's going to take the commission a little longer than that to come up with a decision. But we need to get all the well, information. You, would, I just have a question. Though. Would you, sure. Are you wanting to hear back from legal counsel before you schedule? Yes. Is yes, what sure. I understood. And so we don't really have know what his timeline is going to be exactly. on to be able to really so until we hear back from legal counsel we can't set it time. and then you don't need to necessarily keep checking in but if you get yourself on the agenda notification list then you can receive the agenda each week um, you can do that in the county clerk's office and then you'll be able to see when that is scheduled by looking at the agenda you're able to get on that notification list yeah, i mean i can see the agenda we'll we'll, we'll let you know when but yeah we'll just soon because I may be gone and, right. and not have access to that. Oh, we'll, we'll get back to you. But, All right. I guess my final thought, and I appreciate the time, is yep. as far as the time, I, I just don't want it to be a, a lot right. of times it, it's like, it's okay, we'll get back to you, and, and it might be a year or two years on down the road. Oh, I just soon right. we need something or, or right. people are going to become very unsettled out there. Right. I appreciate that. All, All right. Well, and thanks for your time. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you, Greg. It is in the legal counsel's hand right now. Right. Yeah. 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 Did that last week? Yeah. Did the last document get to him too? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, Steve Schmidt, you're waiting online. Uh, would you like to make some public comments? Uh, yes, if I could, please. Uh, I probably think I'm a broken record, but here it goes anyway. <laughs> um, Steve Schmidt, uh, Heston, Kansas, Marion County landowner. Uh, I noted in the, the paper last week that uh, Commissioner Becker wanted to move ahead this week, June 3rd, uh, with further uh, discussion on a 30 by 30 resolution, but I didn't see anything about that in either last week's minutes or this week's, I'm sorry, last week's agenda or this week's agenda, but I did, did see that, uh, his comments in uh, the May 28th uh, minutes. Um, at the May 13th commission meeting, there was very strong commission consensus to exclude historic trails uh, in any county resolution opposing 30 by 30. And I really do thank the commission for that. Uh, and I'm trusting uh, the commission will, will follow through with that commitment. Also at the May 13th commission meeting, I heard commission consensus to get planning and zoning and county attorney input and give public uh, ample opportunity to comment on any 30 by 30 related resolution before the commission votes on it. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you for that also. And I'm trusting the commission uh, will follow through with that commitment. Now, when I say ample public comment, I'm really thinking something along the lines of the uh, burn regulations uh, that process that occurred a while back, or uh, it could probably be done through planning and zoning. Don't want to suggest how you do your business, but I uh, would like, you know, uh, uh, formal public input. Um, and I think any county resolution uh, related to 30 by 30 should be thoroughly vetted uh, so that un unintended consequences do not arise later that might do more harm than good. Um, I, I do, do want to emphasize I'm still very much opposed to anything in a resolution that would prohibit land landowners from voluntarily entering into any legal agreement affecting their land, including entering into a conservation easement. And finally, I, I want to say I am opposed uh, to any federal overreach through 30 by 30. And and with a good bold and I am equally opposed to any county overreach through any 30 by 30 related resolution. Uh, I think either uh, such overreach would be detrimental to personal freedom and uh, landowner rights. And um, I appreciate you uh, letting me speak again and uh, um, appreciate your thought on all of this and I look forward to, to the process. Thank you, Steve. Uh, again, I don't think we're any, we are not pushing for speed. It's not off the table, but we're still gathering information. All right, uh, Tamara Hillman, would you like to make public comments? Uh, yes, uh, I wanted to 
simply echo uh, Steve Schmidt's sentiment as well. Um, I, uh, for reference, uh, don't actually live in Marion County. I'm just north of you in Dickinson County. Um, but I do work for an organization that uh, works with landowners who are interested in conservation easements. And I wanted to, you know, simply, you know, echo what Steve said that any sort of resolution uh, just needs to be really thought out to make sure that it's not uh, really doing the opposite of what it intends, which I think the intention would be to protect private property rights. Um, and, you know, putting in a resolution that's going to require some sort of oversight uh, or, you know, if a landowner wants to voluntarily enter into a conservation easement um, or put their historic trail on a national register, that those should be things that landowners can still do for their private property. Um, and so, you know, just echoing not to, to rush into an anti-30 by 30 resolution that might end up doing the opposite of what you hope to achieve. Um, and I'm also happy to be a resource if there are any questions about conservation easements, because I know that they're a bit of a complex topic um, and are sometimes uh, voiced as a type of land grab. But uh, in my experience uh, with all of the Kansas land trusts that I have worked with, um, and my review of the land acquisitions uh, that have happened already with 30 by 30 and other parts of the country is that they're completely voluntary. Landowners have to sign willful, that they're a willful landowner agreement. Uh, and um, There's plenty of opportunity for landowners to review everything before entering these voluntary agreements. So um, that's all I wanted to say, um, you know, no action requested on my part per se, other than just uh, careful consideration going forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tamara. Uh, could you forward your contact information to our county clerk, please? Uh, yes, I will. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we've had an influx of people in the room for, I, I think it's for our next appointment, but was there any anyone else wanting to make public comments? Okay. Then we will move into agenda approval. Uh, first thing we want to do is move 8th Judicial District up to current time. <laughs> we'll move it administrative to the end of the meeting. Uh, any other changes or additions to the agenda? Uh, county Councilor will not be here. Talk about uh, groundbreaking ceremony you know, for the new medical building. Okay, we'll do that at the end. Anything else? If not, agenda is approved, and we'll move into the 8th Judicial District. Thank you for your patience. No worries. Thank you for having us, folks. Uh, my name is Ben Sexton, and Nikki uh, Davenport, our court administrator, will be handing out uh, budget. Mm -hmm. We also have some other people I'd like to introduce. Uh, our head court services officer, Lois Smith. I think this will be Lois's last budget meeting. Is that right, Lois? Unless you're Rhea. Not Rhea? <laughs> Um, Jan Helmer, I'd like to brag on Jan, you know, there's one clerk in the state of Kansas that's in charge of two counties, and that's Jan Helmer. I uh, think very highly of Jan. And then, of course, Stephanie Petrie, our court trustee. Lloyd's brought um, with him uh, court services officer Courtney Parker, who, who may be stepping into his shoes. We'll see in the near future. Um, the budget we have for Marion County, there's two increases you'll see on there, very minimal. Uh, one coming from the court services, and that's just simply doing business. It involves the systems, uh, the computer systems, both our IT person's salary, and um, they have more machines over there, which cause more um, uh, more work on part of our IT person, more percentage, and I think it's up about $3,000. Then we have, we want to increase, if we could, the mediation costs, and a modest amount of $500. That program is turning out to be very valuable. Um, you know, they, they mention all the time about crime going down, and I always smile because it's not what I'm seeing. This conference will now be recorded. We're going to record on GoToMeeting because our recording stopped over here when the power is I don't know. I did not say. No, it was either. It was, it was a brown hat.
you know, some kind, but I don't know if it was local or if it was bigger. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, we're ready for the conservation district. Here in the hall. <laughs> Lori, bring everybody in. All right. So my guess too, Lori. All right. That's it, my scared of you. All righty. Sorry about the delay. We had quite a few public comments today, so they okay. they are at the front of the line. So, um, Lori, thank you for being here. It's a new system. We're still talking about the power oh, flash. So. Okay. You want to finish? Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, now the floor is yours. Uh, um, we're here asking for our budget. Mm -hmm. We've probably gotten the report from us yes. again, like from last year, and what we have done over the past. And we are uh, asking for a forty-two thousand uh, dollar budget this year. Uh, that's twenty-five hundred dollars more than what we've been asking for over the past four years. We've had, we've kept a steady budget for four years here so and now with the cost of inflation and you know we kind of like to have raises occasionally in the office <laughs> we've got some coming up here um, this uh, breaking it down it's basically it's only a 625 dollar increase over the last four years per year, per year so right. so um, if you have any questions for us for anything you the little spreadsheet up there shows kind of what we've done over the past year, and so. I appreciate the work you've done in the, the presentation because that does give a good summary of the, the tremendous amount of conservation work that, that yes, benefits all of Mary County. A lot of money funnels through that office that goes towards all of this stuff. And it gets results. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments? Just a pretty good job of staying. Uh, I wanted to recognize it. That's and I hope everybody recognizes it. They, they've stayed pretty level. I mean, the kind of increase that they're asking for is insurance costs. That's, that's one of the things that may possibly be coming up in the next, hopefully, in the next year or so. The state we've been losing a lot of conservation district managers across the state because there is we don't have a health insurance plan. So the state is working on, I should say the state, the conservation, the division of conservation through the state. They are working on trying to get us more money from the state so that they can apply and get us, help us with some kind of health insurance so that we're not losing so many district managers. So but there may be another increase here in the next year or so right. trying to help fund that. So. Just kind of depends what they can come up with yeah. as far as what they can find and whether they can get us on us some, some decent insurance with that's not outlandish in price. Right. So other questions or comments? Health insurance is handled county each county separately then? Um, most counties don't have any health insurance right. for their employees. They, the yes, we are on capers. They allow us that. And that's across the state. So why they didn't ever get any of the conservation districts on either your county's insurance or the state plan like the capers, I don't know why. But they're they're trying to do something like that. So there'll be some more money matching from the state eventually to help with that. Well, would the rest of the members like to introduce yourselves? So we I'm Greg Bowers. Brandon Ends from Peabody. Bruce Schroeder, Hillsboro. Kaufman Liggett, Durham. Yep, and I'm Matt Meyerhoff. I'm with the USDA and RCS. Partner with the board, so I'm a part of. Yeah. Well, we appreciate all of you coming in today. I, and I think, as Commissioner Dawkey said, your organization's done a good job of, of controlling costs and requests, and yet accomplishing a lot of good. Yeah. So any other any other questions? 
Thank you very much for coming in. Again, sorry for the wait. <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is John? Yeah. Several bits. Oh, they did draw Z. Oh, John, how are you to see? No. Okay. We're ready to open bids on the uh, bridge project. Bid, I hear. Yeah. Oh. Three now. All right. Oh, really? I'm going to let you Never hand the commissioner a sharp object. <laughs> Delegate. I can shoot it, but I can't cut it. <laughs> there you go. You don't want to call the event. I I think this will work is if I can get this little part open. I just don't want to rip up everything. Either, so. yeah, I want to explain to them what, the, what this bid is for. Okay. Yes, give us some background while, while we're anticipating. It's to replace the bridge just west of Mustang on 310th. The status is what? Fracture critical? It was a fracture critical bridge, so definitely needs replaced. And this was through which is through which program? This is the KL BIP. Local bridge improvement. Local bridge. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting used to all the little <laughs> Yeah, and this is the one where you had to close one in order to get funding for a second. One that was closing to close is on Old Mill between 260 and And we have the uh, notice of hearing pretty well ready to go for that. Um, so we should we need to get that published and schedule a hearing uh, in the next few weeks. I'm going to let you present the bids. I was just going to pass them down to you. Yeah. Usually there was only one. Uh -huh. We had some couple yeah. come in, right? It's good. Any lack of envelope and envelope. Oh, <laughs> this is like an election. <laughs> <laughs> And we just need to accept that one just because they're the most fun. For the most work. from L&M Contractors. Uh, it looks like they're at a great bend. And 
uh, base price two hundred fifty seven thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. And if additional abutment piping is required, it will be furnished and driven for $50 a linear foot. Proposed number of working days, 60. Proposed date as soon as possible. Uh, the next one is <clears throat> Norfolk Constru Contracting. And this is out of Norfolk, Nebraska. And the bid uh, base price is... $219,736 and if additional abutment piling is required it will be furnished and driven, driven for $40 a linear foot. Proposed start date July 22nd, proposed number of working days 45. And then uh, we have one from Reese Construction in Salina. Base price 296409 and 97 cents and the additional abutment piling would be furnished and driven driven for fifty dollars and seventy six cents per year foot and the proposed uh, start date is november 4th and it uh, proposed number of working days 40. Okay. well we thank each of the bidders for for bidding on the project we appreciate that uh, Appreciate the interest and, and uh, willingness to bid on the project. I think at this point we'll have staff uh, summarize and make a recommendation for next week. Does that sound appropriate? Uh, it looked pretty clear, but we'll have you summarize just to make sure everything's in place. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. We need to check with the planning and zoning, but it's my understanding that we have to wait until after July because of the, uh, what, the shiners or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Okay. Disrupt the, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the start date will have to be. I know we're going to say it's July 22nd. So right. Yeah, it's pretty close. We just have to push it back, whatever. Right. So we'd have to consider that. So. Yes. Good. Okay. Any questions from the commission? Any statements or something from? Um, well, we got three good bids. Again, I thank each of the contractors for bidding. It's always good to see lots of bids. What was the cost share on that? 90%, right? It's a 90-10. 90-10. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else for us? Uh, just a little update on what's going on. Um, we're Trying to attempt the blade patch to solve the heart, do that when it's raining like it is. We're still down south. We're coming along our first couple, our first week was doing, we were getting pretty productive, getting a lot accomplished. A um, couple of the patches were a little rough starting out with, but I think we made corrections to get them taken care of. Uh, but uh, we're still going to try to stay ahead of the original asphalt crew that comes in. It's going to be in two inch overlays. So we still are we're ahead of schedule on that. Yeah. Um, our rebuilds uh, on 30th are completed between Old Mill and Timber, with the exception of the uh, inch and a half Waverly Rock. We got three miles of yet to cap that off. We just have not received enough at the South Shop in order to do that. But the road is firmed up now with a sub base rock that it should be a long play. Um, we, we are at this time on the first mile east of Highway 77. And uh, we've got a, a crossroad cord installed tomorrow. Uh, we've got a gas a transmission gas line going through there, which we have to be pretty careful of. But we've got the sub base on that road as well, waiting to be capped off. And now we're getting ready to go on to the final two miles to Clover. So it'd be from alfalfa to Clover to start the ditch work and the shaping on that. So. Which road is it? I'm sorry. This is beyond 30th, okay. east of Highway 77. Thanks. Any questions? Are we shutting down as we're going? Or? When we're out there working, like for instance, this crossroad cover, naturally we're about to shut the road down entirely. But as far as us actually more, uh, uh, working the road itself and pulling ditches, we just have road work, uh, uh, road close ahead signs uh, through traffic allowed, basically. Um, and we just ask people to kind of slow down, go through when they're going through and watch the traffic. 
but it's usually opened up in the evening all the way to our, but it's closed is from uh, 8, 8.30 to uh, approximately 2.30 is when our normal work is opened up after that. Uh, for people who don't have to deal with school buses and all that right now, so I'm really happy the way things are coming along. They're finding some good rebuilding stuff there. I mean, pulling up. Yes. I got to say, it's a hippie, so I mean, it's been roofed out there. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's coming on pretty good. Our, after that, then we're planning on going on the Strasburg Road, uh, just north of the residence there. Five miles there, six miles to do there. So. Uh, anyway, keep plugging away. Very good. It's good to see those improvements coming into place. Looking good. Sure, with Steve, there was a couple of uh, massive improvements, but little scarifier things mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They were very appreciative and thought mm -hmm. people were going extra mile and yeah, shaping the roads, putting crowns on them. So, yeah, positive feedback. So Come along, guys. Really good. good. Very good. All right. All right. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, John. Have a good day. All right, let's move into uh, landscape discussion. Okay, I did hand out to each of you some information on the landscaping around the courthouse, which I've been discussing a little bit as we go. Um, we did hire a company to come out and do an, a professional landscaping plan. And what we asked them for was a design that would be, um, that would accentuate the building, would be a long-term solution that would not require a lot of care in the future, and also would have some color all through the year. And so that is uh, what we have here. And then we did get um, proposals from two companies to work. Um, this includes, of course, all the plants, the irrigation system, the um, the fabric, the, like the heavy duty landscaping fabric, the, and it's a large rock that would go on top of that instead of mulch, because mulch you basically have to take out and replace every year is the recommendation because it can make your plants it's moldy so, um, and they have both of these companies that provided a proposal do you have a one-year um, guarantee on the plants and then the labor to put them back in so the, the first company that provided a proposal was uh, Johnson's uh, basically it's Johnson's Garden Center out of West Wichita Mays area and their first proposal that came back was uh, over $26,000. We asked them to tweak a few things to um, to become more in line with the other company that bid, and they did that. This includes all of the same things, except it does not include any around the landscape. They were just going to use, they're just planning to use the sidewalk for edging, even though we asked them then to include it. The other the other company is um, Maria's or Marillo's, I don't know how exactly how you pronounce it, out of Newton. And they suggested and included in their proposal a limestone edging around the entire landscaped area. And it also includes all the same things as the other as the other company. And so the final and, and best price from, from Johnson's was $24,000 even. And then the, the price from, from Murillo's was uh, $24,470, which includes the limestone edging. And then of course, all of the plans are, are designated and the design. Basically, we would have four tall shrubs in the front, like that would be up against the um, in front of the building where there are no windows. Um, so we would have some height. Those are the uh, oh, yes. And I did verify with both of the companies and ask their opinion because obviously you have a, a professional landscape person coming in. You would expect that whatever we're putting up close to a building would not hurt the foundation. 
right? That was a concern that I had because the, there are a lot of shrubberies in this design and they were both very comfortable that the root systems would not interfere with the foundation or the building. So, uh, but there's a combination of shrubbery. We do have some uh, smaller colorful plants in here. Um, you might notice on the northwest corner, the little rounded area, which is in the bottom left of your, you see the stairs. Uh, there is nothing in that area. Um, it would just be rock. We do not have water to that area. Um, right currently, we don't have water to this northeast area either, but we are planning to put um, a hydrant in there because we have access to water. Um, so we have a plumber coming out to look at the, to get us water there. So these would all be on timers with, uh, with the drip system. This is a drip system sprinklers or, or is it a sprinkler system? It is a drip system. Better for conservation, anyway, water conservation. So those are the proposals that, that we have. We did try to check locally. There were there are no companies that uh, are close by that want to do this kind of work or have the capacity to do this kind of work. So, um, and I would propose that we would, if if the board is to approve the plan, which it would be really nice if we could do something. It's been kind of a long time coming. Um, that we could potentially take the funds out of sales tax, pay out of sales tax, or pay out of the court, courthouse uh, building maintenance or multi-purpose building line of the budget. And I do this year? Yes, yeah, so um, we would need to get on the schedule. I think Johnson's is a couple months out. Um, Murillo said uh, that they could get it, they were trying to work us in at the beginning of July, weather permitting. So. Um, any of this area outside of it, part of the, the concrete that needs to be reworked to be done? Yes, it we is. Probably do that before it's just, just construction. They're going to tear up all your good stuff if we don't do the concrete first. Do it first or the concrete? The concrete first? Yeah, this, 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 equipment in? this is this is more of a finish work. I, I, I'm just I, I know that if they want a bobcat in there, they'll go right over your sidewalk. I'm just yeah, because yeah, they're gonna come the landscapers are gonna come in with big equipment. They're gonna remove um part of the dirt that's in there and all the existing plants except the two little trees over here, which they'll shape up, reshape and rework to to make them healthier and to get them in the right shape and they're bringing more soil in. Concrete, I way. did ask about I did ask about that Jonah and they didn't seem concerned about us taking those sidewalks out. Now the one that's using the sidewalk as edging I think it would yeah. be an issue and it could very well be an issue. Limestone. On the uh, it has the limestone edging it should be. Is that going to be up, tucked in behind the sidewalk? Um, I would assume that it would, like we do plastic edging, but I don't know if they put soil on both sides or not. I see both sides of your question here. Right. You know, if you put that limestone in and they come in to do concrete work, it might tear all that up. It's both sides. I mean, both ways. It could happen both ways. It's something left it. I don't know. <laughs> so I, normally, I mean, the best if it's all done once, you rip up the concrete. Landscapers come in, set theirs, and they build their their forms. So then everybody's kind of playing in the same space. That would be ideal. I don't know when we're going to have that plan back for uh, the concrete. Um, Darren was going to work something up for us, but also he's working it into his other projects. And then even trying to get that done, it may not be in the right season to be able to do the other project. So. I guess when we go to concrete, you just have to put in special condition that they have to pay for any repairs because this is so new. I, yeah, I do something to that. Yeah, so they they that. Sit there for how long before they could probably even mess around it? Got to cure out. I'd be more concerned about the damage to the new concrete. Yeah. 
And, and between the two bids, I like the one with the limestone edging. I think that would be a nice feature. Um, and I think it will help when we do the concrete sidewalk it, it, rather than no edging at all. Oh, yeah. So that way you can do the concrete. Right. That was my thought too. And I know it's, um, there's not a good way to do it unless you do work that all together, but I don't know that we really. It's Don City Rock. It's, it's like, right. yeah, go for it. It's just the kind of the bigger, like rounded, um, it looks like river rock, but it's bigger and it's not shiny. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> is that, does that describe it? I just call it river rock. River rock. Yeah, river river rock, rock is what we kind of call it. Uh, <laughs> nice little round. Yeah, not local. Yeah. We don't have anything like that. Not, not tire busters. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really have an example of it, but it'd be. I'm not going to use weight. It's, it's not something. something like this, except not necessarily hard to all hearts. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something people will walk into and break their ankles on, though, is it? Could be. Well, I mean, you stay out of it. You know, no, you know people. Let's put an electric, yeah. electric fence underground so that it should be a big cigarette butt out of it. Yeah, there you go. Um, it's not going to be bump, bumpy. It's this type of thing. I don't know. And I am working on something special for that northwest corner, but I'm not going to tell you about it yet. <laughs> so it's not always rock forever. It won't be plants. I'm thinking of some sort of a sign or something nice there. So, well, uh, I like the plan. It's a lot of thought went into it for maintenance, for, uh, color, the root concerns been addressed. Uh, I think it'd be a nice addition to the, the courthouse. Questions or concerns? We've been talking about it for. Well, every, everything up along there, all um, we've been talking about the dan we've been talking about the dandelions too. The next 20 years, 30 years, so they've been uh, getting I, behind all this stuff and then wrecking it, trying to work on the building. Uh, so the low work on the building is is in decent condition, and we did some tuck pointing like on the stairs on both sides last yeah. maybe two the years ago. Now. Be done up high. The work, yeah, would I'll be. just make sure. Yeah, a good question. Well, um, go put stuff in and then. Get, get trampled. You just have to be careful. That don't exist. The employers all, yeah. But then you know, the guys. Other questions or issues? Oh, we we went a long ways around a few years, quite a few years back. Um, Dug out and tuck pointed and sealed and did all that along the side of the basement there. So, but what causes that problem? Water. And here we go. We put water back in on to have plants. So, are you? I mean, it's a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, hope we we did a good job. But I'm just saying that's and that's what they blamed. Like the rock problem was the water from irrigating trying to what plants we did have which was nothing to this extent mm -hmm. so well, yeah, sprinkler systems have well, a lot of drip yeah, systems hose, i mean uh, yeah so you know, it puts a lot more water on it not, catch, not catch, denying that it's 22 too but it's having the vegetation there absorbs the water so yes yeah it, yeah that's the other way to look at it mm -hmm. and hopefully that most of them are low enough you have your variety, but I think that's part designs to have the variety. That if you have all five foot tall bushes along there, you're going to have a problem. I just, you know, who's going to laugh at us for doing this? We laughed at the last ones for. So anyway, go ahead. All right. Uh, is anyone ready with the motion? I would move that we proceed with the bid for Morello's landscaping. Uh, landscaping project is outlined and presented. Estimate of $24,470. Uh, 
expenses plus tax. There won't be tax. It'll be sales tax expenses. Four thousand. Come from, uh, let's say, sales tax. So li license and bonded company, I guess. Yes. Is there a second? I'll no second that. Second by Commissioner Crowfoot. Other questions? That was a good follow up on the licensing and bonding. Well, the payment application would be one and done. Didn't actually talk about that. Um, I know on the other one they, they were asking for half down, and then once again, so I don't, I don't know. There is not an actual bond required because of the price. You know, of the value of the contract, but I we will make would, sure that they have the appropriate insurance. So I would, I would, uh, I didn't know yeah. what type of licensing landscapers have. Yeah. I would thought they, you know, they're a contractor. I um, mean, well, like a lot of these, the, the price point being so low, they don't have, you can't, you don't get a bond. So they, they bring the, the stuff on site before they send for half the bill, before it's planted, but they, they've got it it's here. here on site. It's just kind of like some of that. I don't know. I, don't know. I like I like that considerably because I don't want to get on the other to the, uh, the heated dock. So this company that, uh, has done landscaping projects here in Marion. Yeah. They've done a okay. lot of bank here, okay. and That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say it's probably you know if the board's okay with it, it would be appropriate to put a deposit down of some sort. Um, uh, yeah, I wouldn't hand over. Here it is. Never see something. I thought they wanted half down. That was the other company. This one we haven't really talked about the, the, those details. Yeah. Right. Other questions? Uh, good discussion. You got to add that to your motion. Or? What the payment plan? We're going to make a well, separate be a deposit. Yeah, we'll let. Okay. Well, how about we let the administrator handle it? Keep us updated with the concern. Make sure there's something recognition of that. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Other discussion questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carried 5 0. It's interesting how it speaks to the past. <laughs> At least we're remembering. Very good. Thank you, Tina, for the work and putting that together and uh, bringing that to us because that's it, I, there's a lot of work went into that. Well, I'll put a thank you in when when the green flowers are out there and the pretty, pretty flowers are blooming and stuff. But boy, I don't know. If <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's going to start off looking kind of yeah. small, but it'll all fill in because there are a lot of plants there. Yeah. yeah. Ashley's already sneezing, so I don't know. If <laughs> oh, oh, we sneeze. <laughs> Good job. And what's that? Bringing the grass seed into the house. Let's let's we'll look at that next. <laughs> next here. Yeah. We, we definitely control. don't want to do any grass until we do that. Oh, that sounds like a weed and grass seeding. Oh. Oh, but we have sprayed or we have put out some weed control products on the lawn recently. I don't know if you've noticed that a lot of the dandelions and such are dying up there. So. That even looks worse. <laughs> yeah, now it just looks bare. <laughs> a lot of times the landscapers have the little shimmy tractor yeah. cedars. So that's just why I was asking. Up, yeah. up July, that wouldn't be the right time. <laughs> I didn't want to like bring you too much at one to bite <laughs> off at one time. Smart move. <laughs> so speaking of biting off large chunks, budget discussion is next. And really, I put that on there because we had district court scheduled at two o'clock, and I thought that oh. we'll fill some time, you know. Okay. Um, so we can move that to the end and have just a short discussion. Do you want to go ahead and do administrative? Sure. Let's let's do. Or is there something else that you would like to? Chuck's been online. I just don't know what that's. Chuck, do you, do you have anything, or just listening in? Just listening. All right. Thank I you. Just, I, I noticed he's been up there for a while, so I just want to make sure there wasn't nothing that needed to be handled. Yeah, if you need anything, just. 
text us or shoot us a message. All right, uh, administrative, Ashley. Um, I have the minutes of May 31st. Commission has had a chance to review the minutes of May 31st. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Gehring. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Becker. Any discussion or changes? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All in favor say nay. Motion carried 5-0. Okay. All right, today was the filing deadline at noon. It was busy this morning with <laughs> 23 candidates coming in today. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, you guys can pass down. This is just a preliminary list right now of everyone who's filed. There's the county offices, city offices, Township and precinct committee, men and women. Um, as you can see, the uh, District 2, we have two filings there. We do have an unaffiliated um, packet that we have to go through that we received on Friday. Yeah, but the filing deadline for that is not oh, until the day before the primary election at noon. And candidates are not considered actually filed until petitions have been reviewed and approved and deemed sufficient. Um, County Commission District 3, there's three there. County Attorney, we have no filings. Uh, we have our County Clerk filing, Treasurer filing. Um, the Register of Deeds, we have two there. And also for County Sheriff, there's two. Is there just one Ramona City Council position? Up? Uh, it's under city, it's the last one. Yeah. Is there only one position up? So just wanted to give you guys a little update. All right, next. Okay, um, so the administrative report was a little bit short this <laughs> this time, <laughs> but we did have a holiday on Monday and then um, I was out of the office the last two days of the week. But on the project updates, you probably are all that the demolition is complete on the old site, or on the site there. Um, I did hear from the engineer, there were no surprises, no tanks, pipes, no smell of petroleum, nothing like that. So that's all very good news. They're gonna be removing some dirt and then uh, doing some other work here shortly, but I uh, just want to kind of give you a little bit more of an update on that. Um, the election space, I don't know if any of you have kind of peeked at that. Um, it's coming together. You can see what it's you know, kind of gonna look like. So. Um, that is slated to be finished uh, on the before June 15th. And uh, tonight, the city, uh, Marion City Council is going to consider um, a request that um, I had sent them for property acquisition for the vacant lot behind our uh, building at 1240 commercial for parking. So I just want to. You need to go to that meeting. Or... Uh, I'm sorry. We need to go to that meeting. Do I will attend. Um, if anybody wants to go, that's fine. Let me know. But if um, if multiple commissioners plan to attend, please let Ashley know so she can do a special notice. So. Oh, I did create a Facebook page for the administrator's mm -hmm. office, but Facebook deleted it. So now I have to start over. 
against their policies. It, it didn't believe I was. It didn't believe I was a real person, and so then I had to prove I was a real person. But then when I when they let me back in, then my page was gone. So I'm gonna have to start over and figure that out. But anyway, yeah, too many. So I'll, I'll I'll work on that again. It just it was it's frustrating because it t took me, you know, a good part of um, like like half a day or like mm -hmm. takes it wasn't time like fast. So anyway. Okay, and then there's some upcoming things. Oh, well, when they delete you, you just reload everything from X. Oh, yeah. Eventually, I'll probably have multiple ways of, of communicating, but. Okay. Um, that's really all I had on the administrative report, um, unless you have questions about anything. <clears throat> Any questions for Tina? I, I do appreciate the reports and the information. I think that's what the commission had requested. Very helpful. And as far as the budget discussion, um, I, I know Mr. Profit wants to talk about the groundbreaking for the new mm -hmm. building over there, but on um, budget discussion, I guess I have, I wanted you to think about um, at the department budget presentations, you know, was there anything that stuck out to you that you were concerned about or that you wanted to discuss more? What do you want the process to be from here? Do you want to go through each department as a and their requests and talk about them or um i mean kind of what do you want that process to be for your involvement i think we need to go through each department second okay we'll start that on the 10th i guess okay okay sounds good would would the possibility be to look at what they're increasing instead of you have to go through the whole thing on each one. I mean, why they're at, what the increase, if they've got an increase or decrease. Sure. I've, I went ahead and did the preliminary, just keyed in everything that they put on their budget requests. And so I'll, um, I have kind of have that in the workbook. Um, I haven't got um, everything printed out. I haven't done wages because I think you all wanted to talk a little bit more about that, what you want to see in the way of estimate so if we know we talk about that and you can let me know what you want to see for sure um there was a comment about doing like three different ones of like for cost of living i don't remember what those percentages were um so if you kind of let me know what for sure you want to look at we can get that ready and see how that also affects employee benefits and all of that so i know each one of those is a lot of work um it's it's um once we do one template then putting in other numbers oh, okay. it's not it's just the initial if you're doing yeah. one okay yeah it yeah. should be okay i think so while we're on that does the commission have a consensus of what they'd like to look at or do you want to wait yeah. any department that doesn't want to increase their budget it's really not throwing red flags at me so mm -hmm. i just Correct. If, if they want to increase their budget, then I think we need to know why. Mm -hmm. like Randy said. So back to the wages, we we're talking about cost of living, right? Mm -hmm. So is there an interest in looking at cost of living increases for next year? Are you done more than one? Or will you? I mean, well, so the, right now, the estimates that um, we did were based on one a one step increase in July. So a one step increase, what you're looking at. So, uh, so generally, cost of living is done in January. Right. Uh, one and step increases are in July, is how our pay plan is set up. If the, if the board decides to do cost of living, then we also move the ranges by that percent so that you're, you're, you're not topping people out. Like the ranges actually move when you do cost of living. So, so you do. A step increase goes up in their scale, but you do cost of living. Is that a percent? Generally, it is a percent. Yes. So our employees gets a higher cost of living. Right. 
Now, what was it? The one yeah. one year we did a, a set. Yeah, yeah. So you can do a set, just dollar amount too. Yeah. Well, I'm just, mm -hmm. just do the set well, dollar. I want the rules laid out. I'm not looking at what. It, I mean, right now I'm not looking at what it costs, but okay. later I want I want the rules laid out here so that everybody knows it's your set dollar amount. Better raise for the dollar that got paid less, and lesser raise for the people who got paid more. Right, and that. But one thing to keep in mind, and I'm just. Mm -hmm. Um, when you're when you're dealing with pay scales, each position has a range of of what the position is is worth, and doing that is fine. I'm not I'm not um, trying to promote one way or the other, but it does contribute to compression. Like I don't know if you remember when the the consultant was here talking about that, but that's like when you continually raise the bottom and you get raised to the top, then you then you can compress your scale yeah. so and plus then you're you having to play like we are with the attorney mm -hmm. position right because we didn't do cost of living so it didn't it didn't stay with the market and it didn't bump that up through the years so then you're now you're scrapping that level and putting in a whole nother one and cost of cost of living to me tells me that i gotta pay more for milk and you gotta pay more for milk Pay in the same same thing. That's that's the cost of living. That's that's the problem with it being called cost of living. It should be called something else. It should be called uh, keeping up. Keeping up the journey. Keeping competitive. <laughs> or something. Infl inflation offset. Something. Yeah. Because cost of living is the same thing that you just said, and that's the reason why. But that's basically what it is for. I mean, that's what it is. It is cost of living because that's inflation. Right. No matter what you, they, you know, they follow an index for Social Security, which basically comes out once a month, but it's based on the one from what December or January. Yeah, December. That's what the annual cost of living on Social Security. Costs. But they keep an index. They keep like right now, it's like three point two percent. I'm going to refer to what I just heard this morning. The place of a venue, a place to eat, very nice place, $50 a plate. I don't, I don't eat no plate, $50 You plate. don't even have to go to a very nice place to get $50 a plate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, I'm just saying that's, you know, well, I'm eat hamburger or bologna. Cost of living, just to put it in perspective, what did I just see that it costs an extra $11,000 a year for a family? A family of four? Yeah, family of four. Well, then so, what, I mean, that, then that, what it was that in, just tells you what it was in 2020. But that's still a and, token. And this doesn't mean you have to put it in. It's just a, if you want to look at numbers, you know, I, we just need to know what you want to look at. Right. If we're going to, if there's interest in the commission pursuing something, we need to be prepared yeah. with the budget. It would right. be best if we'd be prepared with the budget. Right. I mean, if we're going to do that, then we need to give Tina the parameters to provide the See what 3% would do. Yeah, currently, you know, we probably, you know, you have to have some kind of index to follow, <laughs> and that's the easiest one. Well, I'm, I'm still hearing the solid number, and then I've heard percentages. So is there, I mean, we've got to give Tina some guidance. The, the solid number was basically a bonus, wasn't it, that one year? Yeah. Everybody got the same thing. But seeing the ripple effect that comes from that. And having to change pay grades clear out, you know, I'm, I could do the solid number one year and then the then the percentage in another year, but you got to try to maintain both elements. The solid number becomes a percentage when it's all added together to look at your credit so all together. Yes. But if you do a percent, that rewards your leaders, you know, yeah, because you want them to be the better people. But it's also you, it's their percentages. Giving them a lot more money than it is the guy down the yeah, down but, the totem pole. That's why there's leaders. They should be compensated more. They are. They're compensated more. Yeah. They get they're getting a step yeah. in July. But the, uh, the other thing is too, I mean, it sounds like like some of the departments are fully staffed now. So mm -hmm. I mean we've we've made those improvements. 
and part of that was to get people hired because mm -hmm. guys at the top aren't going to do all the work that the guys at the bottom do so i kind of agree sometimes i think we look i think we need to look at both you know, balance both cost of living or quote unquote bonus Going the bonus so route. I don't know what it's going to cost us. Going the bonus route would not adjust the pay bands, the pay scales. Right. Yeah. So you, your ba the one time the bonus would be a one time. It doesn't move the whole thing up by whatever that is. So the gaps just move on up. Mm -hmm. So say everybody, yeah, everybody got a dollar. You would necessarily you said that. So everybody got a dollar wouldn't wouldn't uh, since the unless step. you decide that you're dropping off the low steps and then adding steps on the top. Yeah. Okay. That rec that recommendation was given when it had set for so long mm -hmm. that to to drop the lowest bottom the bottom step because it was so low, mm -hmm. and that you move up to a higher step for a bottom step. Well, and commission has done that at different times, and even with this current long. plan, we've done that. Not too long ago, we dropped four bottoms. Right. That was the big adjustment. So. Not getting you a very many, very good answer, am I? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and if we were, and if we were really looking at at it from a true private business, we'd look at each department and see who is who is running the most effective budgets, staying in budget, and reward them. Well, probably it doesn't work. Maybe it doesn't work on account on a governmental level. Nothing seems to work on a governmental level. But I mean, if you're looking at, at running a business, and you've got departments in a private business. You're gonna you're gonna look and see where our most effective departments are. The board it gives us the other departments incentive to get. get you can <laughs> tell where the comment come from just a few seconds ago before that. that the, said to raise the. The higher ups. And that's when a businessman speaks. That's what he was speaking. Yeah. Um, well, and <laughs> I don't. I don't say that. I don't the reward uh, good people. Anyway, I mean, um, there's there's a lot more in, in order in a governmental setting. There's a lot more than just the, yeah. the budget to consider we, too. You know, we try to, we try to compare using using private and yeah. public. And it, it doesn't it compare. Doesn't work well. most of the time. Yeah. What were you going to say? Come up with that solid dollar. The last time we did that, we had to come up with what the percentage was first to figure out what that budget impact was. Mm -hmm. That budget impact, and then we divided it down by the employee to get oh, a solid okay. dollar. So you still got to go with the percentage way. Okay. So that okay. way you know how much you're going to increase the budget. So that way you can play the game on whether you're going to divide it out that way. Then let's circle around and restate the question: Is is there commission interest in increasing? The global salary pay raise by two percent, three percent, whether you call it a cost of living or whether you call it an inflation factor, whether you we call it. say two and three, just to see what the right. impact. Right. Right. And that's what I one in one percent doesn't sound like much, but it <laughs> ends up being quite a bit when you're figuring in benefits. Yes. I just always prefer it to be one percent, and then you see what the one percent is. And if you want two percent, you double that number. If you want three percent, you triple that number, and then you don't you aren't doing a bunch of figuring out. Just yeah, but you can do it, do it one time. Is that, that accomplish, is that accomplishing raising the step scale? It doesn't that skew the that that skew the that that benefits decision is is later. So basically, it brings forward a, a cost impact. I'd rather just. I mean, we can do a, a generalized number that way. It's just not going to be quite as specific as what we figured the other way. So, is what I'm hearing one, two, and three? We may have to drop it back to one, two, don't we? <laughs> All right. Let's do one, two, and three. Okay. And just for you to look at and kind right. of have an idea what, right. what you want to do. What and maybe you don't want to do anything, or maybe there's right. going to be room to do anything. But. Right. When will we have the assessed numbers? 
soon. <laughs> the police required to have it to us by the 15th. Um, oh, yeah, that is coming. I thought it was later. Okay. No, it's June 15th. Okay. But, um, June 15th is a big day for you. Yeah. Gonna have the stuff downstairs ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it might actually be, I don't want to say when. Yeah. yeah. I mean, anyway, mid June sometime. Yeah. Mid to late June. Progress is happening on that process, I can tell you. It just that's kind of the number and lets us know where we're helps us out. Right. One more question on yes. the we've heard it the department in here give us a report on the roads that was scheduled and, and the rebuilds and scheduled, but yet we had a snowstorm that took eight hundred or thousand million dollars worth of rock extra. And we we know that we're gonna hit a little shortage at the end of the year on on rock so now we've got road scheduled to take more rock i mean is there is there an outlook here that we'll oh, just go ahead and do them and then we'll pay for it at the end of the year or is there an outlook say hey wait a minute maybe we better keep our end of the year budget under control just ask it because I, I heard that this morning and i know that that's a lot of ton of rock per mile so we can't fix any roads in November, is what you're saying? Maybe? I, I'm just saying. No, I'm not. You got, you got to find money. Yeah. And it's all money. And you and I and all the rest of these guys got to figure out how to do that. And so I'm just throwing it out to say, you know, yeah, I want to keep my men busy. Okay. Let, let's, get a, let's get an update of where road and bridge stands on their rock budget. Mm -hmm. uh, that, so part of the budget process that we're going to do with them would be to um, do projections for the current year. Okay. Um, however, sure. like a lot of those invoices we don't have yet. Sure. Right. And um, one thing that I, I have some goals in mind, particularly with that department, as far as some little bit different bookkeeping and just how to a little bit be a little bit more on top of knowing where we are but that's not probably going to happen till next year well and that's fine but anyway but part of what we'll do with the budget process is look at the current year projections to see where we think we're going to be at the by the end of the year i know that's guessing but you can be as educated as possible and making those determinations so yeah, this team to be on the board that writes up the farmer's almanac. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, that you don't you don't know that for sure. Don't go by fog. <laughs> I, I just I just know that that's one way you can sort of control your budget. Yes. I mean, yes. sure. Maybe they get out and just the roads, Dave. Not maybe just keep the roads great instead of. Well, right. There's a limit. You you can't keep spending when you don't have any money or budget authority to do so. I, th I think it's a great idea to get an update on where we stand. It's just like, uh, you know, this winter we had to use two inch rock on most of the road, a lot of the road, a lot of miles. Now I'm getting nothing but complaints. When are you going to cap that off? That is, that is on the south. I drove and some. I've, I've driven them. They're really, really yeah. rough. Yes. Don't get me wrong. And then they're going to stay that way. And, and if we don't give directions to her, to them, to get that stuff done can't that's extra money too going out for rock i mean that's yeah. this is, so but yes yeah, so those those are rough that two inch stuff is pretty tough on um, it stayed there there's no doubt about that but yeah we can't i drive down it i don't see a problem with it <laughs> but i'm also driving 30 mile an hour maybe yeah. impact yours down more than some yeah, of those yeah. <laughs> well, most of the people driving those roads are driving a truck with 10 ply tires but the the five percent that don't have issues. <laughs> I'm a big believer in having the right equipment for the right job. Yeah. So. so, what other um, things do the board have that you want to uh, make sure that we address during the budget process? Like, are there specific things? Well, I've always said that they come and they go. Come in, they walk out, and they think it's. Is theirs because they presented it. And I'd like to change that attitude. I mean, that's somewhere that attitude has to change. Uh, we have to know why we have, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to go over each department, look at that. But it's we're 
don't know if we ask enough questions when they're here. Yeah, but have, have, have we corresponded with them well enough to say, okay, we're looking at we're looking at a tight year. You do whatever you can to keep the budget in line. I mean, have we actually corresponded to them? I mean, they all know what kind of environment we live in, but have we actually corresponded and said, you know, we ex we expect you to keep the the budgets in line this year? I, I think the commission before we did ask. If I remember right, ask for a five percent reduction or a ten percent reduction one year. That's asking for a jump. Yeah, yeah. that's a per, that was a pretty big deal reduction. That and I've heard about. I was hearing about that, and then I, we've but never what, done it since. What would be wrong with asking for that every year? I think that would help them in the budget process, even if they can't come up with a five percent. And in this environment, we all know everything costs more. So that probably unrealistic, but asking to hold the line on the budget is not unrealistic. Because there's always areas of efficiency that get overlooked when you're busy. Any other? <clears throat> How comfortable are you with if there's, you know, it from fund to fund changing the levies? Because like we have certain funds that, um, We've always had, like, um, in the past, we've tried to keep the mill levies the same for each fund. But, you know, some of the departments, that they, they don't take that much to operate. And so we haven't moved those, reduced those mill levies in those funds. We've just allowed some cash in those. Um, how comfortable are you with levying less in some of those funds that are healthier and re levying it in a different fund? I think that'd be wise. Administrator recommendation on that would be yeah, I agree. Makes sense to me. I mean, it does make sense. It makes a lot of sense. You know, okay. things change. Right. Some, some departments are requiring more. Some are requiring less. Right. So that's one thing I'm well, was yeah. curious about because well, a lot of times sense. we have a tendency to just leave them the same tax dollars as the year before, and it may or may not need to be. I, I think there's consensus to shift. Okay. That's appropriate. That's, that's helpful because then I want the administrator be able to watch that right. well, on a on a week to week basis rather than once a year budget even though the clerk already watched it <laughs> but during election and we uh, everything else we, we have somebody that is able to make a, a good decision and present us with a recommendation uh, I think that's, um yeah. any other like major major things that you all have concerns about that you know we need you want to see in the budget or have ideas about well you know like when we get to the ambulance we're going to have to look and see what we can do there or have to if we, if we did find some ground that would be suitable to put a building back up before. right so you, I, I, like, I liked the idea that scott had about uh or the um that he he talked about about having like horizon like list out what the list is for capital improvement like for those kind of things and if we funding source and a necessity and all those things then it moves up on the list and if it's just a something that's in the, that we know we need to do in the future but we don't have a clear path on how to get there have it lower until it's figured out so i'm just kind of curious he called those horizon issues but i'm, I'm just kind of curious um what your thoughts are about that and what issue what things you would put on on those lists you know uh like a short term two to three year list versus a longer term i mean where would you put that ambulance station on the list i know you, you <laughs> want to do it soon but then how are we going to pay for it is that's you know are you looking at trying to that's those are the discussions we're going to have to have because are you looking at complete tax levy for that or you know or are we going to be looking at financing you know like a lease purchase or some something Strategy planning isn't that what it's called yeah <laughs> and that's kind of what i need you all to be thinking about um, like the little details of the budget document i can work on that and like the departments and tweaking and bringing you 
you know, well, here's where this is different from before. Is there anything here that you have a concern about for each for the different departments? But the big picture things and the plan for the county moving forward and what infrastructure we're going to have and what we're going to look like, those things I need from you. Well, you've not some pretty good capital improvement projects, horizon projects have been accomplished. I guess in my mind, I'd put Peabody Ambulance right up there pretty close to the top. Uh, and I have a question about that. <laughs> well, maybe it's, I don't need to ask it today right, or right now. That's okay. <laughs> um, obviously, Road and Bridge Shop, our new location is on the list, but where I don't put it at, it's not going to happen today because we, because we as a commission have to make some decisions. So I think that might be a two or three year. Doesn't mean we can't start putting money up for it. Up for it. And I would say that would be a high priority to start. And a strategic building too for the equipment. You mean emergency management? Management. We're paying rent for now. Uh, the next thing, high, very high on my list, of course, is road improvements. Whether we need to increase our budget, contract hauling budget, hard surface budget. I mean, we've, we've made some good strides, but we need to continue to fund those projects. One thing I also want to mention to you and just remind you of us on the road and bridge, the equipment, yeah. because we used to transfer 500000 a year into special equipment, and we have cut that back, and we're only transferring 350000 a year for the past several years, and we haven't, you know, we just that equipment is going to be important too to, to keep that'll catch up with us yeah so i just want to caution you about that a little bit that we need to we need to study the cost effect affecting this buying new equipment iron out same same goes for uh, long-term cost of gravel or shorter term or you have immediate costs some maintenance. You don't have to buy these pieces of equipment to maintain that. Everybody says, oh, these roads are so expensive. Are they? I mean, they are, but we have, we have got to fix the ones we got before we can expand it. We've got something falling apart. We've got a lot of miles to do yet. A lot of paved roads allows us to have that many less graders. Uh, that many less miles that need a grader. And we've got papers that are being graded right now yeah. because they're falling apart. Yeah. We've got to get them fixed. We've definitely not kept up with the amount that we've transferred to special equipment because mm -hmm. the cost of a piece of equipment in the last right. five years is getting close to doubling. <laughs> Let's look at ambulances. I mean, whether well, they're not graders, but well, ambulances is just and then and then just planning for how soon you have to make a decision to replace because you can't, you can't get stuff delivered. You can't go out and buy one tomorrow. I don't think we're ever going to get that four wheel drive ambulance. <laughs> that thing's going to be an antique when we get it. Retirement day. Okay. Okay. What other? Other. I've listed mine, so. Uh, One thing we do need to do is, you know, have a replacement schedule because we know we're having to replace CPU, the, or excuse me, the, these condensers, the air conditioning units oh. on the jail, and then, like, of course, this system here in the courthouse is a, it's very aged. So, um, you know, those are issues that we're going to have to be thinking. We, know, almost, need, we almost need to have a strategic plan from every department. Well, I think we need to. Well, some of those things are going to need to be probably centrally yeah. planned. We've got a facilities director now, too, that can kind of prioritize. Yeah. Them. And I'm not saying we have to deal with all this this year, but these are things that we need to be start being proactive about as we move forward and not just. Uh, strategic plan deal that we did was. That when you come home? Yeah, and it, we didn't go over. Well, it's a waste of time. We did, actually. There was. We got a list of we got a list of policies and things we got done. This is more capital improvement. But yes, you're correct. We did we did get a lot of policy issues and a lot of those cleaned up. But capital improvement we need to focus on. 
major capital improvement projects like even the elevator, other courthouse repairs, facility repairs. Oh, that reminds me. I just wanted to let you know with the rain that we had, we had a leak at uh, on the in the roof on 1240 commercial, and then we also had a leak at the annex. Pretty major leaks. So, but they're being handled. The um, contractors being called out to look at that one, and uh, we took care of this one. So, just let you know, <laughs> we haven't had that much rain in a while, apparently. <laughs> That's where we noticed it. <laughs> See about a drought. Yeah. Five inches over here. I got a tenth of an inch in Hillsborough. Don't need a roof. So just letting you know, we had those issues and they're being addressed. But. That's in the department, but we used to, when you talk capital buys and improvement with machinery, whether you new versus used or whatever equipment, we used to sort of really evaluate the equipment we had and have a schedule for mm -hmm. graders and things, and. And I'm just saying that I've heard a couple of greater operators in the last six months say, oh, my machine's broke down, my machine's broke down. Well, I, I don't know what, when they when they say broke down, they're bringing it in for something. We don't know what kind of cost these each of these machines are costing us and stuff like that. And I sort of think maybe maybe that's what we also need to look at when we look at budget on equipment is what that machine's done. Broke down how many times? The Volvos was breaking the, the, the whirlwind or the... Well, when they get 15,000 hours on. Well, enough, if, you, if you get to that, yeah. But uh, those didn't make it to that, yeah. Yeah, all those didn't make it. So. Okay. I mean, that, that helps a little bit. I just want to make sure that what we do kind of. That's not your time. job, though, on, when you get down to equipment. That department better be doing some of that. Bryce has a schedule, kind of. It's by hers. It is, it is her job in a sense. It is, it, it, it is to make them keep it doing that so she gets a report. Right. So I've recently asked all the departments to provide a list of their vehicles and the mileage. I haven't done the heavy equipment yet, but we yeah. are going to be doing that. So that's going to be a process over time, but also something that we've done from in the last probably 12, 12 years, maybe. I don't know. We have we used to have just a few pickups in the Redenbridge department, and now we have a ton of pickups uh, because people used to drive their personal vehicles to check the roads, and we paid a mileage to do that. And now a lot of people have a, a vehicle that's provided by the county to go and do that. So those are things to think about too for future. Not, I'm not saying that needs to change anytime soon, or, but that's something that has developed over time where we have a lot of, of department vehicles that are being used for those. And some of that has been a good thing because there's one little red pickup that the only thing wrong with it was the rust on the side of the fenders. And it was passed down. When that was passed to the road and bridge department, those people are just, because it's, it's 150,000 miles, 160, is where it was at, somewhere in there, compared to some of the other pickups, got 200 and some on them, and beat, beat up passed down beat ups and but this one was a dream so so there it's just you can take advantage of passing a good vehicle down I mean, sure and it's just a matter of deciding you know how many of those we want to keep maintaining and paying insurance and insurance and all that stuff. good information to get yeah. information all right anything else to put on tina's list it's getting pretty big or <laughs> Information is good. The thing is, once it's once you get your spreadsheet together, then updating it isn't so bad. It's yeah, it? it's just a matter of you know keeping in mind that it's we're not going to be able to make a ton of changes this year, you know. But just being able to know how to move forward and and things that we can improve for the future and right. that's perfect. That's it. That's it goes back to making less dollars pay for more hard to do and it applies less well, yeah well, i mean the, the county's this way i mean we've pretty much got a captive tax tax base our population's not going up and yet we've got to keep making the capital improvements yeah. all right uh dave you want to talk about groundbreaking Huh. Yeah, we had a, a voting meeting and we talked about the 17th yeah. at 10 o'clock in the morning for a commission meeting. Okay. And 
entirely up to Tina. <laughs> you get the ribbon. <laughs> oh so, I got shovels. <laughs> so what all do you do you want to see in that? I know you had talked about inviting some of the city officials from Marion. Of course, we want our health department people. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the architect wants to be involved in that. And thanks, um, Betty said they have a piece of equipment up there. So what else? Just gonna throw this out. Of course, the 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 what committee for Marion you said? Oh, I just said some other city officials, but you want the advan Marion advancing campaign. That's what I'm saying. Some I, of them are so the saying, people. I hope all the mayors of this county are happy with it. Not just city of Marion. Okay. I, I was just going by what you guys told me. Correct. You wanted Correct. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying this to the board, right. not to you, Tina. Okay. The board that I don't know. Should I all city councils, small well, cities in? City mayor or something. Mm -hmm. That might be mm -hmm. put put in Marion, but it's it's in a the hospital, county health department. Right. Yeah. In hospital administrators. Uh, you know, Why, I, because we're going to build in the third hospital in Marion County. No, no, we're not. We distinguish that. We don't. We're we the the generator does not need to be an emergency hospital generator. No. All right, we're we're getting off track. Yeah. I, mean, do you I think, think we've got the. Do you want a big crowd, or you just want a picture for the paper? Well, I'm just trying to invite people in. That's right. All. And so, uh, I guess I want to know: Do you are you going to want to have make comments out there? Are you going to? Because if we are, and if you're wanting to invite a lot of people, then I need to make sure that I have a little sound well, system out there. The speakers, uh, you know, that's up to a bigger video. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I, I, I was thinking city mayors if they wanted to come. I don't think councils need to. No, I think city mayors. Yeah. Okay. City mayors, that's, that's... We don't need to eat and drink, do we? I hope not. No, no. <laughs> make, it, make it short. Yeah. Golden shovels. Yeah, Co uh, Cody Nelson already has that. Oh, okay. I believe. Who gets to hold the golden shovels? The commission? The committee. And the architect? The committee, committee people. You said he had a bunch of them. Uh, <laughs> I don't yeah, keep this guy healthy enough to hold the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maintain it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. That. We got a date. We got a. We just picked that. Okay. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. What can be here? Couldn't do it on the 19th, but it's going to be gone. Oh, yeah. I am going to be gone, but I don't have to be. 17th right. Works Commission. Yeah. I'm good. Good on a Monday. Okay. Great. Okay. That took care of the ground opening. Thank you. Do you have anything else? No. Okay. Commission comments. I just want to say congratulations to Marion on Chingawasa Day. It's another great success, good event in Marion County. And we're keeping pilgrimage coming through Pilsen. Uh, a lot of things happening in Marion County this week. This weekend? This past weekend. They had a big sign out on 15 highway so people could come up 15 and 77. Bike rider thing that's coming up. Yes. Um, all right. Start yeah. thing. Yeah. So no, it just hits the side of the county, but it's that bicycle ride. People are going to wonder what the heck's going on. So if you make and, an announcement. Doesn't that originate out of Abilene? Emporia. Emporia. Oh, that was the dirty 200. And this is an unbound gravel. Excel. Yeah, but it was still part of the same deal as the race. Yeah. I don't know. I know it's a 350 mile jog. Wow. <laughs> but they're going to have some bikers running through rural Marion County, just at the edge of it. East Edge. But people should know that it's going to happen. And not off guard. We've got a bunch of bikers coming down my road. Okay, that is this coming weekend. Okay, Unbound Gravel XL. It'll catch Burdick and the east edge of Marion County, but it is 350 miles. So starting in Emporia, making a circuit. You got a drawing of it? I thought Burdick was in there. It is. Burdick's in it, but they're going to come through uh, Cedar Point. 
ride the the county line up oh. and cross I'm gonna cross 50 down there which isn't technically marion county there but i'm gonna cross 150 and then they'll drive back out into morris <laughs> okay any other commission comments all right in that case i move to adjourn second second by commissioner Gehring. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those say nay. Motion carried 5 0. We are adjourned. They had a 200 mile bike race.